Here are the top stories for today, February 10, 2022. The government remains optimistic of the country's continued economic recovery amid a slight increase in unemployment figures last year. The palace says the easing of Metro Manila's status to alert level 1 is possible if cases will continue to dip, paving the way for the resumption of more business operations and the restoration of jobs for Filipinos. The Labor Department stands firm on maintaining the current OFW deployment suspension to Saudi Arabia as the host country has yet to settle the financial claims of some 11,000 OFWs dating back in 2016. And single employees of the Davao Occidental Province government are in for a Valentine's treat, a day off and allowance await those who want to find the right one. Good day, I am William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The number of employed Filipinos increased in December 2021 compared with the number of employed Filipinos in November 2021. But the unemployment rate in December 2021 increased compared with the November 2021 rate. National Statistician Undersecretary Dennis Mapa reported that the labor force participation in December 2021 was 49.55 million individuals. It was almost 910,000 individuals, more than the November 2021 figure of 48.64 million. MAPA said a total of 46.27 million individuals were employed in December, an increase of almost 800,000 over the November 2021 number of 45.48 million data. There were 6.81 million persons underemployed in December 2021, an improvement of more than 810 million persons in November 2021. But the unemployment rate in December 2021 is 6.6% or 66 individuals out of 1,000 individuals in the labor force were without work or business. It is 0.1 of a percent higher than the 6.5% unemployment rate in November 2021. Uh, mas marami ang nagparticipate sa sa labor force, ano? Uh, kung ikukumpara natin yung uh, mga numbers, ang increase natin sa labor force participation ay uh, nagdagdag tayo ng 91, uh, 910,000, no? 0.91 million. Uh, so, this is the increase uh, from uh, November. So, itong 910,000, dagdag ito sa labor force participation, ang uh, 8, 800 sa kanila ay nakahanap ng trabaho. So, ito yung nagdagdag din doon sa employment. Pero yung 110,000, hindi nakapaghanap ng trabaho, naging unemployed. So, ito yung naging dagdag naman doon sa uh, unemployment rate. So, hindi lahat na nagparticipate, as I explained, uh, will find jobs. So some, in fact, most will find jobs in this case at yung uh, iba ay uh, na sama doon sa unemployed. Certain foreign nationals who are traveling to the Philippines without visas are no longer required to present valid tickets for their return journeys. Acting spokesperson and cabinet secretary Carlo Nagrales says the policy applies to those who are coming in for business or tourism purposes. Foreign spouses and or children of Filipino citizens and former Filipino citizens with Balikbayan privilege under Republic Act Number no. 9174, including their foreign spouse and or children who are not Balikbayans in their own right and are traveling with them to the Philippines, will not be required to possess return tickets not later than 30 days from date of arrival in the country. Nograras also announced that upon the recommendations of the Department of Foreign Affairs, the National COVID-19 Vaccination Certificate of Brazil, Israel, South Korea, and Timor-Leste shall be accepted or recognized for the purpose of arrival quarantine protocols as well as for interzonal and intrazonal movement. Kung inyong matatandaan, may nauna na tayo mga bansa, teritoryo, jurisdictions kung saan ang kanilang proofs of vaccination ay ating kinilala at tinanggap. Kaugnay nito, inaatasan ang Bureau of Quarantine, Department of Transportation, One Stop Shop, at Bureau of Immigration, 
na kilalanin ang proofs of vaccination ng apat na bansang aking binanggit. The National Capital Region may be placed under the most lenient alert level 1 if the COVID-19 cases will further decline in the coming days. Malacanang said key officials of the government's interagency task force for the management of emerging infectious diseases will be having a series of meetings to discuss the latest COVID-19 data and numbers in different regions, including NCR. Acting Presidential Spokesperson Cabinet Secretary Carlo Negrales said the next meeting after today may be held over the weekend for them to come up with their final decision for the alert level system from February 16 until the end of the month. Meanwhile, the Department of Labor and Employment will be conducting large-scale inspections of establishments to ensure compliance with health safety standards. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III said they would want the region to be placed under the most relaxed alert level for business and employment to survive. Bello said he is convinced that even when the situation improves and cases are down, it may result in the lowering of the alert level in Metro Manila. He said that as of February 6, more than 100,000 business establishments have applied for the COVID-19 Adjustment Measures Program of their department. The nationwide Res Bakuna for Kids program is being intensified as it aims to protect the younger generation from COVID-19. It also aims to gradually open face-to-face -face classes as the number of COVID-19 infections is currently decreasing. The details from Marita Mawai. In Taguig, Health Secretary Francisco Duque and Taguig Mayor Lino Cayetano led the rollout of the Res Bakuna sa Butika at the Mercury Drug Bonifacio Global City branch this morning. In Pasig City, children aged 5 to 11 years old who received their COVID-19 vaccine get a free train ride inside the mall. The pediatric vaccination was launched at the SM City East Ortigas. In Quezon City, pediatric vaccination was made more fun with colorful designs and mascots during the pilot rollout on Monday. In Pampanga, the province kicked off its Res Bacuna Kids vaccination drive yesterday with a party-themed program at the Jose B. Linga General Memorial Hospital in San Fernando. The venue was decorated with balloons to make the children feel at ease and those who have been vaccinated were given hot dogs and popcorns. Meanwhile, Negros Occidental is also coming up with ways how to increase the number of registrants for their vaccination drive. The provincial office says parents who will register their kids for the pediatric vaccination on February 14 will be given 2 kilos of rice each. And in northern Mindanao, the DOH Region 10 is planning to conduct a two-day vaccination per week for the pediatric group. It is currently coordinating with the Department of Education to ask for the master list of enrolled students as they will also conduct a vaccination in the classroom to ensure separation from the older population. The pediatric vaccination rollout in the region will officially start on February 14. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Marita Moahe. The Department of Education, or DepEd, has strengthened its homeschooling program as an alternative delivery mode. Education Secretary Leonor Briones said this is to ensure that our learners have choices in attaining quality education. As such, the Education Department has updated its guidelines, standards, and procedures for the said program. The revised policy indicates that if the country remains in a state of emergency, the focus of the instruction shall be on the most essential learning competencies. If this is no longer used in subsequent school years, the K-12 curriculum will be implemented for the program. The order also highlights that parents or guardians are responsible for monitoring their children's work and progress and that they are the primary agents of the teacher learning process, including its design and execution. Introduced in 1997, the homeschooling program is designed as one of the alternative delivery mode offered by any public or private school as a response to the needs of learners who are unable to attend formal school due to medical conditions or family circumstances. Still ahead, Manila's defense chief says the Philippines and China remain friends despite contrasting territorial claims. And the Labor Department is not keen on lifting the current suspension on the deployment of OFWs to Saudi Arabia for now. Details ahead, keep it here on the PNA Newsroom.
Authorities in the provinces gear up for the upcoming national election in May. This includes securing their respective areas from election-related violence. The details from Chris Chris Mundo. In the Cordillera region, various programs of the government are seen to contribute to peaceful polls in the area. These include farm-to-market roads in the far-flung areas that allow residents to get government services and bring their products to the market. Moreover, Brigadier General Ronald Lee of the Police Regional Office Cordillera said several firearms were surrendered and confiscated as part of the continuing effort for Opland Katok. Lee said no active private armed groups are operating anywhere in the region that has been known to perpetrate political killings and injuries in the past elections. In Iloilo City, the majority of the 37 candidates running for various posts have committed to a clean and honest 2022 elections as they joined Wednesday's interfaith prayer for peace and unity caravan and covenant signing. Based on the Comelec official ballot, four candidates are vying for the city's lone district seat in the House of Representatives, three for mayor, two for vice mayor, and 28 for the Sangguniang Panglunsod seats. And in Cebu City, the military says it will see commitment of local chief executives in avoiding violence during the election period. During the stakeholders' recognition activity in relation to the 86th Foundation of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Visayas Command said it will partner with the Commission on Elections and the Philippine National Police in conducting activities that will culminate in candidate signing of a covenant to shun away violence. Viscom Commander Lieutenant General Robert Dao said the primary objective of the military in the forthcoming elections is to assure that the people can exercise their vote and that election day would be peaceful. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. The Commission on Elections is finalizing its list of areas of concern in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao for the main nine polls. Kamalek BARMM Assistant Regional Director Renault Makarambon said areas of immediate concern are those where violence may occur due to intense political rivalries, the presence of armed groups, private armies, and lawless elements. Areas of concern are places that have a history of election-related incidents. Military and police authorities are also discussing the presence of the Daula Islamiya terror group, the Abu Sayyaf group, private armed groups, the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters, and other lawless groups in the region. Meanwhile, the Kamalek will launch Oplan Baklas, a campaign to remote unauthorized campaign materials of candidates for both local and national posts. Makarambon has appealed to all candidates and their supporters to remove their unauthorized propaganda materials displayed outside common poster areas. The Philippines and China remain friends and partners in various areas of cooperation despite having contrasting positions on territorial issues. Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana made the remark following the turnover of donated military equipment by China's Ministry of National Defense at Camp Aguinaldo, Quezon City. Lorenzana said the military grant worth 1.05 billion pesos shows how the two countries can have good ties despite issues such as the West Philippine Sea. On behalf of President Rodrigo Duterte and the Filipino people, the DND chief thanked China for its generous support of the defense and security sector. The first batch of military equipment arrived in Manila on January 16. Under the terms of the grant, China will support the capacity building activities of the Presidential Security Group, Marawi rehabilitation efforts, and other humanitarian assistance and disaster relief undertakings. The suspension on the deployment of Filipino workers to Saudi Arabia stays for now, unless it has settled the financial claims of some 11,000 overseas Filipino workers. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellio III said he wants to ensure that once they started sending OFWs to Saudi Arabia again, they will be treated nicely and be given what they deserve. He, however, said they will stick to the deployment restrictions for now in case there is a plan to expand it. 
He said he is willing to sit down and talk with the officials of the host country. In November 2021, Bello ordered Manila's labor attaches in Saudi Arabia to stop verifying new contracts for household service workers. The matter involved the non-payment of salaries and end-of-service benefits for one to two years of the OFW's worth over 4 billion pesos. As the world observes Safer Internet Day, partners in the movement to end sexual exploitation of children celebrate called for stronger community resolve against the continuing threat. The DOJ Interagency Council Against Trafficking, PNP Women and Children Protection Center, International Justice Mission, TikTok, PLDT and SMART joined hands to urge the public to take a stand against online sexual abuse and exploitation of children. The campaign hashtag not on our screens aims to cultivate a culture of vigilance against the trafficking of Filipino children. More than 300 perpetrators of child trafficking have been arrested and nearly 900 victims have been rescued as a result of the government's relentless campaign. The government through the DOJ also scored at least 138 convictions as of December 31, 2021. Meanwhile, about 179,000 URLs linked to online child abuse were blocked through PLDT Smart's child protection platform as of January 31, 2022. Anyone may report incidents of online sexual exploitation of children immediately to the PNP Women and Children's Protection Center. Up next, a $2 million grant from the Asian Development Bank is set to boost recovery efforts in the aftermath of Typhoon Odette. And we find out how the province of Davao Occidental is planning to give love to its employees on Valentine's Day. More stories when the PNA Newsroom returns. Hi everyone, James Deacon here. The COVID-19 vaccines are finally here and the government wants to make sure the vaccines reach us. So let's do our part by making sure that we get registered to be included in the vaccination list of our LGU. You can register right in the comfort and safety of your own homes through your LGU's online registration platform. And you can also register on site in the vaccination venues or through your barangay. Remember, getting vaccinated is the first step towards ending this pandemic. So let's do our part as disciplined citizens. Bida ang may disiplina. Magpaharehistrot, magpabakuna para sa ligtas na pamilya, ligtas na bayan. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOX, is monitoring localized earthquakes on the northwest flank of the Canlaon volcano. FIVOX Director Renato Solidum Jr. said the localized earthquakes monitored were high-frequency volcanic tremors caused by movements of magma. Compared to tectonic quakes, which are caused by fault movements, a volcanic earthquake is caused by movements or eruption of magma from the volcano. As of Wednesday morning, FIVOX has recorded 11 very shallow earthquakes. Canlaon Volcano remains under alert level 1 or low level unrest. FIVOX reiterated that entry into the 4-kilometer radius permanent danger zone must be strictly prohibited. Residents on the lower slopes of Canlaon are advised to report any unusual observations to authorities. Pilots are likewise advised to avoid flying close to the volcano summit. A leader of the Communist New People's Army died in an encounter last Tuesday in Barangay Alipao, Alegria, Surigao del Norte. 
The Army's 30th Infantry Battalion identified the slain NPA leader as alias Wolf, a bomb-making expert and former leader of the NPA Guerrilla Front 16 of the Northeastern Mindanao Regional Committee. Troopers responded to reports on armed men conducting extortion and harassing the residents in the periphery of Barangay Alipao. The armed men, identified as NPA members, fired at the soldiers and retreated after an hour. Soldiers found the corpse of Alias Wolf as well as assorted firearms, bomb-making material and an anti-personnel mine in the encounter site. Battalion Commander Lt. Col. Ryan Charles Calianta lauded the courage of the residents who provided information on the presence of the NPA rebels. He extended condolences to the family of Alias Wolf, who died fighting for the wrong cause of the Communist Party of the Philippines and the NPA. The Asian Development Bank has approved a $2 million grant to support the Philippine government's emergency response to the devastation in provinces caused by Typhoon Odette last year. The grant under ADB's Asia-Pacific Disaster Response Fund will provide humanitarian assistance to about 15,000 households or about 75,000 people in Visayas and Mindanao. ADB Director General for Southeast Asia, Ramesh Subramanian said this assistance will help finance the humanitarian needs of those residents, especially people living in remote areas. The ADB is partnering with the United Nations World Food Program to deliver food assistance. It builds on WFP's ongoing work with the Department of Social Welfare and Development to provide emergency relief to typhoon-hit areas. Meanwhile, the Department of Trade and Industry in Surigao del Norte announced the start of the financing for micro, small and medium enterprises or MSMEs affected by Typhoon Odette in Siargao Island. The DTI through the Small Business Corporation will be providing enterprise rehabilitation, financing support to affected MSMEs in a form of low interest and collateral free loans. The loans will be payable within three to five years with an interest rate of 6% per year for existing and new borrowers and 4 to 8% for tourism MSMEs. The DTI urged MSMEs to visit their provincial office for further inquiry on the financing program and for the submission of their applications. The Philippine Travel Mart, one of the country's largest travel expos, is opening this year with a promise of significant travel deals to further jumpstart tourism activities. The Travel Expo will be held from September 26 to October 2, 2022 at the SMX Convention Center in Pasay City. Philippine Tour Operators Association President Fe Abling Yu is hoping the travel show could surpass last year's 200 exhibitors. This year, Filtoa plans to bring in national tourism organizations from the Philippines' top source markets like Malaysia, Japan, and South Korea. She said the discounts of hotels and resorts to be offered in the expo are the best rates. Meanwhile, Abling Yu hoped that recent developments in the country's tourism industry would be continuous. The Department of Tourism allocated about 91 million pesos amid efforts to develop domestic tourism circuits. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Rombolo Puyat described the reopening of borders as the beginning of the next phase of the industry's ongoing recovery. The local government unit of Jose Abad Santos in Davao Occidental is giving a treat to single employees who hope to find love on Valentine's Day. The LGU has offered a date allowance to single LGU employees in search of a partner on February 14, Monday. Mayor Jason John Joy said he was offering them to go on leave on the same day and a guaranteed 2,000 peso date allowance. To qualify, single employees could present a chat or text message that they will be going out on a date on February 14. Photos of their actual date must be submitted to the mayor's office the next day. Joy said he got the idea from Mayor Adrian Davoco of Basud Camarines Norte, who will be allowing his municipal employees to have a leave on Valentine's Day to find true love. Joy said so far nobody in the LGU has availed of the allowance or announced they are going out on a date.
Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. The government remains optimistic of the country's continued economic recovery amid a slight increase in unemployment figures last year. The palace says the easing of Metro Manila's status to alert level 1 is possible if cases will continue to dip, paving the way for the resumption of more business operations and the restoration of jobs for Filipinos. The Labor Department stands firm on maintaining the current OFW deployment suspension to Saudi Arabia as the host country has yet to settle the financial claims of some 11,000 OFWs dating back in 2016. And single employees of the Davao Occidental Province government are in for a Valentine's treat, a day off and allowance await those who want to find the right one. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear your face masks and face shields, wash your hands often, practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day.